Okay, my next guest, Tom Trainer, Director of Product Marketing um, at Gluster. Welcome to the, the Thank Cube. You. Thank you, good to be in the queue. Okay, are you also a research analyst too? I have been a research analyst in the past, yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, that's I right. know a Tom Train who's written some great posts about cloud, is that oh, you? thank you, yes that is me, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You're a legend. Yeah, a legend. Um, we follow your work obviously. Um, so you're double, are you still writing? I still I still blog occasionally. Yeah, okay, you still blogging. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then you're at Gluster now since January. I am. Yes, that's so right. So talk yeah. about Gluster. So I know these guys were, you know, around clusters, around storage. So give us the quick two two cent overview of of what Gluster's doing. We've covered them on Silicon Angle, but I want to hear from you you what's going on over there. Well, so uh, at Gluster today, you know, we we well a, a little short history. You know, we started as an open source file system. Uh, provider, and uh, earlier this year we launched three new commercial products. So, and then eventually, um, over the last few months, we developed and launched a fourth new commercial product as well. So, we package Gluster FS and deliver it in a commercial offering or a number of commercial offerings today. So, it's very exciting. You know, we deploy on Amazon Web Services, we deploy through RightScale. VMware, KVM, and Zen, and then also uh, directly on bare metal today as well. So, so you've, been, you've been covering the cloud, obviously, we have been too. There's been a lot of cloud washing over the past year. Uh, <laughs> I think you've called out a few companies doing it, uh, as, as we have as well. But yeah. I mean, the reality is it's a very hyped up market. Um, Simon Crosby was just on talking about open source and how right. important that is to the innovation cycle that we're living in now, which is rapid two-year Mars Law, incumbents are at risk, um, people are trying to do a little land grabbing on certain proprietary extensions of things, whether it's you know, a version of Hadoop or MapReduce or you know, something in open source. So open source is important, but you got to have a business model. So, so what's going on with, you know, and Zen obviously makes a lot of money on management, so you yeah. can deploy an open source business model. So take us through your thoughts on succeeding in the open source world. Well, you know, so open source doesn't necessarily mean that you can't make uh, money as a company. Open source typically has a model where uh, users will download an open source product of some sort and then look to purchase support as they deploy it within a production environment or a mission critical environment. And uh, that, that's a common business model, but also you'll find companies that have been uh, widely adopted from an open source perspective, like Gluster, who has hundreds of thousands of, of deployments from the open source community. They also find methodologies for monetizing that open source product and bringing that into the commercial environment, the enterprise environment, and then offering and b building in support right up front as opposed to uh, doing the download and then tracking you and, and trying to work with you for support. The support's already built in and baked in in the product that's immediately downloadable. How do you guys handle security in open source? Simon talked about that it's actually a better paradigm with open source because of the, you don't rely on one vendor. You guys, how are you dealing with security? I see a hot button is in, in, in the cloud and, and all across up and down the stack. It's oh yeah, that's right. Security is a big hot button. In fact, I was at a uh, event last night in Foster City, a cloud event where we talked about security and a number of other uh, factors around cloud data transfer and interaction. And security is very hot, very topical. What we do is we build security into the file system. So uh, in, instead of adding on and, and taking partners and layering in security solutions, we build security in right from the beginning and then we continually update and modify security as well so that those who deploy our products today can transfer files from private cloud to public cloud and not, not have to worry about security concerns. Oh, they should be worried about con security concerns always, but they don't have to worry about the Gluster file system in a global namespace transferring files. So with all the big data hype, yep. and the big data is a real deal, and we're hearing it across the board from developers, it's early stage, Hadoop is growing like crazy. Obviously we're at the Cloudera offices, Silicon Angle's offices at Cloudera. Um, we know those guys. Uh, MapReduce has been pioneering in, in its implementation. You guys are a file system. Yeah. Um, what is your company's statement on Hadoop? Obviously do you require HDFS? Are you guys different? Do you play along? How do you talk to your customers who are all gangbusters for Hadoop? We love HDFS. We love Hadoop. We think the elephant is really cute and cool. And uh, <laughs> in fact, our uh, VP of marketing was previously at uh, the you know the sponsor for Hadoop. So uh, so we we like Hadoop. And the way we're looking at the future is 
you know, why not make Hadoop better than it is today from a file system perspective? So it's certainly uh, an area where we would say watch this space and what we do with making Hadoop much better than it is today. Do you guys work with HDFS? Do you work with HDFS? Well, we, the way we look at it is uh, we like it, we like what it does, but we think we can actually provide better performance characteristics and lower latency, right, and scalability. And uh, Hadoop's not necessarily built for a storage environment, so we are. So we believe that over time, folks will look at uh, GlusterFS as a potential replacement for Hadoop. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people look at Hadoop, and Hadoop in particular, that it's Apache-based uh, open source project. I mean, they're all about low-cost commodity hardware. So That's right. I don't think they look at the storage subsystems as a strategic, in fact, they might even look at down on storage because it's, to them it's just not an issue. But in the real world, where these their clients are moving, and they're in Cloudera and Hadoop uh, software, is not just media companies and web properties. They got government, they got financial, they have a lot of verticals like healthcare. So yeah, you know, right. these are these are uh, these are verticals that have storage. <laughs> oh, storage yeah. architectures. Oh yeah, that's so right. So what what is you what is your uh, vision on that? How do you see those big deployed or existing incumbent infrastructures dealing with Hadoop in this new world? Well I think it's uh, it's an interesting question that you ask because a lot of these enterprise environments are used to the big spend, the big budget and the big spend on hardware. And when they look at uh, opportunities like Hadoop or even Gluster FS, and they don't have to have that big spend, it becomes a big question mark. Well, why don't I have to spend a whole lot of money for solutions from you know, company E or company I or company H? You know, how, how do I actually leverage this commodity hardware? And, and does commodity hardware necessarily mean not reliable? And today the answer is no. 20 years ago the answer would be yes, not reliable. Today commodity yeah. hardware is highly reliable. And so you got to coexist with the existing, I mean you got to have the proof of concepts. You do. You got to support right. those and there has to be kind of an interoperability. That's very true. And, and you know we're fortunate at Gluster to have such a large customer base that deploys immensely large and scalable kinds of serving environments, media serving environments like Pandora and Envoy Media, right, and Brightcove, who, who just consistently serve lots and lots of unstructured data, huge amounts of unstructured data, and continually scale their storage farm without performance benefit, excuse me, without performance penalties, and, and, and it's not capacity based, right? So the so pricing's not capacity based and, and they love it, right? So you know that kind of concept yeah. is new to a lot of the enterprise environments and, and, and environments that are in the big data space. They're used to spending a lot of money for expensive solutions when in fact today now with innovation, you don't have to. Innovation is a key theme. I'm John Furrier at SiliconAngle.com. We're live at Citrix Synergy 2011 on the Solutions Pavilion opening night. People are drinking and eating. A lot of beer and wine, sodas being drunk and, and uh, food. Uh, this is theCUBE where we extract the knowledge from the smart nodes and share that with you. And we're Tom Trainer from Gluster. Um, they make a file sh uh, clustering software for storage. Um, I know you're busy and you got to get going, but uh, you guys have Pandora as a client. We do. Um, obviously, they're going public. Oh, did they go public? Pandora has gone public. They've gone yeah, public. Yeah, that's right. I know yeah. Tom over there, Tom Conrad, CTO. Yeah. Great service. I mean, they're dealing with a lot of storage, right? They are dealing with uh, an immense amount of storage uh, on a daily basis. You know, lots of storage management, lots of file management. You know, the, the current Lady Gaga album that's out is uh, certainly a popular item for them and 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 so that what they need is uh, what they need is an environment a storage environment that not only stores information quickly but stores multiple versions of files quickly they have a long tail problem right so they need they need to be able to access those files rapidly and not wait for indexing and search time to actually go and find a file and serve it out to their cache servers. And your, your CEO, Ben Gallup, ex Verisign, worked at Plaxo, one of the early guys at Plaxo. He knows all about security, knows all about data. He does. He knows a lot about the industry. Um, you guys are dealing with that. What is the number one concern for these companies like Pandora out there? I mean, obviously they have to run at scale, yeah. and scale out, and yeah. have production level volumes. Yeah. Well, you, you, know, you mentioned Ben, and we just celebrated a one year anniversary of Ben being with Gluster. So it's um, you know a milestone for Ben, a milestone for the company, and we're very happy he's here with us. Uh, you know, essentially, it's 
what customers are looking at is how you know how do I leverage scale out? What does it really mean? You know, and and when I scale out, do I have to pay by capacity or by performance, or you know, how do I do that? And we help answer those questions. And then also, p part of what we do is also answer the question of how do I leverage the private cloud or the data center or the on-premise environment with the public cloud? How do I actually build in these two environments and leverage data transfer or information transfer between the two? And prior to Gluster, the, the methodology was to rewrite applications, use object storage in the cloud, or use some kind of a gateway product. And so, so the question, the real, this final question for you, I'm with Tom Train with Gluster, is also a prolific blogger. Um, question is, will you continue to blog? I will continue Will you have your blog. edge? Sure. Well, pardon? The same edge that you normally have? I'll always have the edge that I, <laughs> <laughs> I have. Yeah. You, know, you can nature. get fired for being edgy, being a blogger and all. No. <laughs> well, I've never been fired, so that's a good thing. But um, Follow Tom Trainer, yeah. great guy. Thanks for coming outside the Cube, sharing your Thanks opinion. For me. We're here on the ground at Citrix Synergy on the floor. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. Thanks for coming inside the Cube.